So, does any of you also wonder if we're stuck in a weird time loop? A weird loop of the 80s, but not the fun version. Not the version with retro music, with technological advancements or space exploration. No, the version where tension between the East and the West is rising, where an economic crisis is imminent and where nuclear threats are made. As the title and the thumbnail of this video suggest, this video will cover the effects of an atomic blast on your body. We will cover radiation poisoning and importantly, how to best protect yourself. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. And for those of you meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and it's my mission to medically educate you, my viewers, so you can make healthier decisions. And remember, I'm just a random doctor from the internet. I cannot provide you with any personal medical advice, so always ask your own doctor. And now, let's get learning. So imagine you're having a fun day, the sun is shining, and you're walking in the park, and then your phone starts buzzing. You take a look at it, and it shows a message. Emergency alert, atomic missile incoming. Please take shelter. And as soon as you read it, chaos unfolds. Everybody starts screaming, people start running, and you think it's a good idea to hide and indeed find shelter, and you do so. And as soon as you do, the bomb indeed drops. Now you're probably are thinking you will not stand a chance at all, but that's not necessarily true. After the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, about 71 to 76% of all people survived. But technology has come a long way since then and bombs can be about 3,000 times more effective. In essence, there are three factors which impact your survival. The yield of the bomb, your distance from ground zero, and your immediate reaction after the bomb has dropped. Let's explore these three components. The yield of the bomb is a reference to the energy it releases. A bigger yield means a more powerful explosion, which can be influenced by the geography of the area, the weather and the altitude at which the bomb is detonated. And depending on the yield of the bomb, it creates a fireball reaching temperatures of more than 6,000 degrees Celsius. This can be a few hundred meters, up to several kilometers. And unfortunately, no human can withstand such a heat. Surrounding the fireball region, there will be an area of two to three times its size with an immensely powerful shock wave and fast winds reaching speeds of almost 1000 kilometers per hour. The speed of these winds in combination with the pressure from the shockwave destroys all the buildings and almost all the infrastructure in the region. And the same is true unfortunately for the human body. We cannot withstand such pressures. It causes our tissues to vibrate and each tissue type does so at its own speed because of the density of the tissue. This mostly causes problems in the junction between tissue types. For example, between bones and surrounding muscles. The same is true for the junction between your tissues and air. This is why your lungs could be severely damaged. The air inside your lungs might vibrate and expand, leading to hemorrhaging and air embolisms, which both can be fatal. Even worse are all the collapsing buildings, which might end on top of you, or all the debris flying around with the speed of bullets. This combination will most likely be fatal for most people in this region. Moving even further from ground zero, let's say several kilometers, you come in an area where the shockwave has lost some of its power and is less severe. Again, there will be a lot of damaged or collapsed buildings, leading to numerous of casualties or people with serious injuries. But there is hope for survival. People in this area are mostly at risk for fractures or wounds or internal or external bleeding. This can come from the vibrating of the tissue or because of the flying debris which can cut or hurt you. It's also important to mention that the thermal radiation, or in other words, the temperature in this area, can still be very, very high. Potentially, it can cause mild first degree burns up to fatal four degrees ones. A four degree burn is a burn that extends through your entire skin into the underlying fat, muscle and bone. Unfortunately, an atomic bomb is more than a big explosion and a giant shockwave. It releases about 5% of all its energy as ionizing radiation, consisting out of neutrons, electrons, gamma radiation and alpha particles. And as you might expect, the level of ionizing radiation is highest around ground zero and then quickly decreases with distance. 
However, levels remain dangerously high for the first few kilometers. All the dust and debris from the surface will be launched into the atmosphere by the atomic bomb. This creates the iconic mushroom cloud. When this cloud cools down, it will create a fallout. In fact, the radioactive dust will fall out on the underlying region. And this creates huge mortality figures. About 50 to 90% of the people exposed to the radioactive dust will be dying from it within several hours up to several weeks. This may lead to radiation poisoning, also called acute radiation syndrome, which clinically has three forms. With a low exposure to radiation, someone might develop the hematopoietic form. It leads to a drop in blood cells and blood platelets. This causes poor wound healing and increases your chance for infections. Higher levels of radiation lead to the second form, the gastrointestinal form. This may lead to nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and abdominal pains. Unfortunately, people with these symptoms have been exposed to potentially fatal amounts of radiation. Without extensive treatment, such as bone marrow transplants, mortality rates are high. And very high levels of radiation exposure might lead to the neurovascular form. This may cause dizziness, severe headaches or a decreased consciousness. And unfortunately, this form is almost always fatal. Bringing us to the last important effect of an atomic bomb. When it detonates, it emits thermal radiation as visible infrared and ultraviolet light. This can be called the flash, which reaches far beyond blast ranges. This flash is so bright that it can cause burns as well as damage to your eyes. And most people, which are close enough of look directly into the flash, it leads to temporary blindness up to 40 minutes or even longer. And in some people, it can cause scarring of the retinas itself, leading to permanent blindness. This indeed all does sound very grim, and I hope we never need to live through it. But if you do survive the initial explosion of an atomic bomb, what you do next in the next few hours can save your life. Therefore, I will provide you with some useful tips and tricks. The best advice always is to hide behind a barrier as soon as you get an alert message or if you notice a nuclear flash. Because soon after the flash follows the shockwave and you need to hide for both. For the shockwave, it's best to hide in a structural sound building because you do not want it to collapse on you. After the shockwave, you will need to find shelter somewhere inside and stay inside. At this time, nuclear debris from the mushroom cloud starts to fall down, which will take about 10 to 20 minutes. Therefore, immediately start to cover your mouth, nose and eyes. You can do this by using a mouth mask or maybe use some clothes you're having and bind it before your nose and mouth. At this point in time, gamma radiation becomes your worst enemy. It can be stopped by putting as many layers as possible between you and the outside. The best would be metal or big concrete walls. That's why it's often a good idea to hide in a basement of a large building or a subway system. About 40 centimeters of bricks and 60 centimeters of packed earth block 99% of all radiation. Now, as soon as you found a suitable hiding place, take off all your clothes, as those might be contaminated with radioactive waste. Put them in a plastic bag and put that bag as far away from you as possible. If possible, take a shower or at least wash your face, hands and any body parts that weren't covered using a sink, a damp cloth or wet wipes. Use a lot of water as this might dilute the radioactive substances and avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth if possible. Next up, don't forget to block any places that might allow fallout debris to enter your hiding place. I'm talking doors, windows, air conditioning units, block them all up. If you are hiding with other people, try to keep as much distance as possible and keep wearing a mask all the time. Now it is important that you stay indoors as long as you possibly can. This is necessary because the radioactive waste loses energy very quickly. Within one to two hours after the atomic bomb has been detonated, the atomic waste has already lost 50% of all its energy. And within 24 hours, it decayed 80% of all its energy. That's why it's often best to wait for government agencies to send help and follow their instructions at all times. Lastly, while hiding, it's safe to eat any foods and drink any liquids that were inside the whole time, but do not eat any foods or drink any liquids that were outside 
because those can be contaminated with radiation. Now, I hope you know now what to do in an atomic attack, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I hope we do not need this information and I hope all the tensions will be decreasing very soon. However, if you did learn something, please click the like button down there. This will help out the video tremendously and consider subscribing. I'm posting weekly medical videos to educate you, my viewers, so consider subscribing as well so you never miss such an awesome medical video. For those of you that can get enough, I also have an Instagram account at How to Medicaid. I will see you there. And a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an Investity supporter. And I will see you all next week with a new video. Stay safe.